the new racists are actually the ones that call themselves anti-racist. Welcome to the Dum Dum News Channel. I'm your host, Dum Dum. We had two new subscribers, so we're at 99 subscribers, almost at 100. And again, remember, if I get 100, I'm going to get a new microphone, so I'm sound much, much better for you guys. Also, if you're new here, please make sure you like, share, subscribe, and leave your comments below. I really enjoy reading your comments, and I will respond to your comments. Today, I'm going over a video from Sky News Australia where they talked to a political commentator, Calvin Robertson, who's out of London. And my question is, how did this whole thing about racism, black and white, uh, white supremacy, how did this go all over the world? This reminds me of Pokemon that took the world by storm. It's like something happens in one place and it goes all over the world. And I want to go over this one because it's not here in the United States and we get to see a perspective from the outside looking in. So without further ado, I'm going to roll this video and then we're going to discuss it. Calvin Robinson is a leading British conservative journalist and commentator. He is a senior fellow at Policy Exchange. He was involved in the planning and building of a new secondary school in North London. And he was a director and governor of Michaela Community School, which recently achieved the best GCSE exam results, that's the equivalent of the HSC, in the United Kingdom. Unsurprisingly, with that resume, Calvin is currently consulting for Boris Johnson's Department for Education, and he is also a regular contributor to the UK Telegraph, Daily Mail, The Spectator, and Talk Radio. Calvin is a campaign champion for, I love this, defund the BBC and don't divide us. Calvin, great to have you on Outsiders. How are you, mate? It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. So before we get into education or the BBC and what appears to be the death of free speech in Britain, you were the subject the other day, Calvin, of another one of these ridiculous race rows. Uh, tell us what happened. Well, this is the thing. For me, this is an everyday occurrence, but it's being picked up by the media because this time it was a race charity that attacked me. It was the director of a company called the Race Trust who uh, put out a tweet saying that this Calvin Robinson needs to be dealt with and doubled down by tweeting from her charity's account uh, that I'm a house N-word. I don't know if we're allowed to say this, the, the actual word on We'll leave station. it at house N-word. We let, we'll <laughs> let the viewers fill in the rest. Thanks, Calvin. Yep. Carry okay. on. <laughs> But then, of course, the idea there is that I don't own my opinions because I'm, I'm brown and my opinions are small c conservative, that somehow I must be puppeteered by um, a white master. You know, that's the idea behind the house N-word, in that somehow I am betraying my own race, as if being brown means you have to think a certain way and vote a certain way. How dare I have different opinions? You know, these people on the hard left say they're campaigning for equality and diversity. But the moment someone expresses a different thought or opinion, they're like, wait, 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 not that kind of equality, not that kind of diversity. It is bonkers. But like I say, this happens every day. This is a common occurrence. It's just been picked up on this one occasion. I'm very happy that it's been exposed because the new racists are actually the ones that call themselves anti-racist. And we see that in a lot of these people that call themselves anti-something, like Antifa tend to have fascist uh, ideologies. Yes. Anti-racists are the ones that are hurling racial abuse at people for just expressing a normal opinion. James. To this uh, tweet, this latest incident, I mean, you say that this happens all the time. And what does that say about just how far all of this critical race theory and divisive thinking has infiltrated uh, British society, whether it's through the media, the BBC or academia or parliament or what have you? Yeah, absolutely. So this is the problem that critical race theory, you know, the idea that white people are oppressors and black people are somehow victims based on the color of their skin is so pernicious. It is so infested in British society that all of our public institutions are on board with this messaging now. But the divide is that most of the normal people, most of the common folk don't subscribe to this nonsense. And that's why we're at such a toxic area at the moment, because in schools, for example, we're telling young kids, you know, you are you are black or you are Asian, so you're going to be held back. You're going to have a harder time in this country with all the systemic racism that's going on, all these hurdles you're going to have to overcome. And if you tell a young person that often enough, they're going to start to believe it. But of course, it's not true. This country is a fantastic place to live. It's diverse. It's tolerant. It's inclusive. You know, we have equal opportunities over here. If you work hard, you can achieve whatever you want to. And that's the message we should be sending to young people. But we're not. And we're telling at the same time, we're telling white kids that, you know what, you're racist. Whether you realize it or not, maybe you're overtly racist or maybe you're subconsciously racist and you're going to have to have some unconscious bias training to whip it out of you. Uh, and if you dare stand up to this messaging and say, actually, I'm not sure that critical race theory is a legitimate theory, then that is further proof that you're a racist. So it's got a cat-esque yeah. trap built in. It's very, very smart, actually. <laughs> Rita. Yeah. Well, is there any overcoming that? Because as you said, this is uh, just absolutely dominates in, in public institutions, particularly education. Will the next generations, the, the millennials and Gen Z, know this is a nonsense? or are they going to grow up with this oppressor, oppressed narrative playing in their minds for the rest of their lives? Well, I think 
people are starting to wake up. So obviously this week, uh, the, the abuse I've had has taken some attention, and that's what we need to do, keep exposing them for the racists that they are, and ask people to follow the money trail. So, for example, these the race trust and, and companies like them are making money off of us being divided. So they're selling unconscious bias training, they're selling books about how evil the white man is, and, you know, all these race-baiting ideas. So. If, the, if our country does become united, they're no longer going to make any money. I think if we keep raising that and opening people's eyes to this is a massive multi-billion pound, multi-million dollar industry, then they'll start to think, okay, what are their motives here? And we need to think about how do we bring people back together? So at the moment, nuance is dead. As I mentioned, if you if you critique this critical race theory, you are a racist. So we need to think of ways of saying, actually, we're not just black and we're not just white. They may be parts of our identity, but they're parts that we don't get to choose. What's more important? You know, we're Christian, we're British, we're Australian. These things are the things that we choose. These are the important things that bring us together as subjects of the Commonwealth. Uh, these are the things that unite us. Let's focus on them and not let people divide us, not let people put us into these categories that we can't control because that's how they control our aspects and fight these culture wars and not be afraid of them. Because like I said earlier, most common people in this country, most ordinary people in this country have common sense values, conservative values. They don't want to be told there are a hundred genders when they know there are two. They don't want to be told that they're bad just for being a white person when they know that they're not racist. All of this stuff is a nonsense to them and they want someone to stand up for them and say, actually, yes, we're not going to peddle this rubbish. We're not going to force you to do unconscious bias training because it means nothing but we know that you're all good people again this guy is in london and as you can see the same bs is taking over and happening over there and he made some really good points that the common people like you and me we don't buy into this and we don't believe this and it tells you follow the money trail we heard recently that blm raised like 90 billion dollars and we haven't heard of anything that they've been doing with the money and then I did a video on the lady that gave Coca-Cola their training videos. So she's making money off of those training videos as well. That's a really good point that uh, you can follow the money to see what's really happening. And he also says that we need to stand up to this stuff. Well, guys, those are my opinions. What are yours? Leave them in the comments below. I want to hear them. For the Dum Dum News Channel, I'm Dum Dum.